Hello everyone, Andrew here, and welcome back to Donkey Kong Country 3. Uh, last time we finished off the first three levels of World 4, or it could technically be World 3, whichever order you like to do World 3 or 4 in. Uh, basically, we are in Mechanos, and yes, we finished off the first three levels, uh, two of which definitely give people some trouble sometimes. You know, Demolition, Drain Pipe, and uh, Ripsaw Rage are two levels which can really go either way, and I was actually really lucky and got through them almost flawlessly, which ended up uh, resulting in a kind of short video last time, which is surprising. Because I figured that the first three levels of this world would definitely take longer than uh, they did. But I guess that's kind of because Demolition Drain Pipe, it's kind of, you know, a level where you're just constantly moving to the right, and there isn't really much exploration to be done. So I guess that's why that level did not take too long, because I didn't really make any mistakes. Uh, so that's why things kind of went a bit faster, but who knows how long this video is going to take, and it could take all day if I don't stop talking. So I guess we will start this, uh, start things off with Blazing Bazookas, and we only have Dixie here, as we uh, lost Kitty Kong last time, which was pretty great. And here we have the theme of this level, which is these guys, who are probably called Bazookas, uh, who shoot barrels out, and you can bounce off of them, and you'll you know, need to abuse that gimmick uh, to freaking heck by the end of the level in order to, you know, reach places like this case right here. So first, you know, it kind of introduces it to you. There's nothing dangerous underneath, and then it slowly makes it so that you have to bounce across lava. Or oh, this doesn't even look like lava from before. This is like weird <laughs> green toxic stuff. What the heck kind of factory is this? Let's see, so we gotta go up here. And then, of course, we have TNT barrels, which you cannot bounce on top of those, and touching them will instantly cause damage. Also, what am I missing here? We have a bonus game. There's something clearly hidden somewhere. Although I might be up here a little bit, maybe. Actually, I'm not 100% sure. Did I really miss something? There's no way. Do I need to throw something up here? That is the question of the day, maybe. And I'm forgetting my layouts of the levels, and that was very dangerous. Where am I missing something? Oh, there we go. Okay, well, what you're actually, I believe, supposed to do is you're supposed to use the TNT barrel that was over there uh, to kill this guy. But, yeah, I kind of completely broke that. Also, yeah, we're supposed to go here with the with a squitter who we were introduced to in the last part. Ah, I'm remembering things now. <laughs> By the way, um, yeah, pretty much everything I do is based on memory. I don't do like a previous run through of the levels before I make the video or anything like that. So I'm thinking back to, you know, two or three years ago when I last beat this game. So if a few things are a bit foggy, I apologize. But so far I've been pretty good with remembering where secrets are, I think. <laughs> anyway, let's see here. We have, but yeah, like I said, we have Squitter again. We have another uh, Bash the Baddies uh, bonus game, which always seems to appear when he is around. Because, I mean, it's kind of kind of a good situation, you know, to use him in, since he has that attack that can defeat pretty much any enemy, I guess, except probably uh, Red Buzzes and probably the Bazooka guys. I doubt that they would die uh, from a hit here. Can we go across here? Is there anything useful to be found? Maybe. I'm actually not entirely sure, because we were probably supposed to go up there. Yeah, here we have the DK coin. Although I think we are kind of breaking the sequence of events, because we easily could have just gone up here, and then fallen back down later. So yeah, we don't really have to do it the kind of super secret way. Uh, what you need to do here is you need to go to the left, and I believe there should be a switch. Like this thing right here. This is the switch barrel, and when you touch it, it will change the type of barrel that uh, the bazooka guy shoots. And now you can obviously put two and two together and realize that the steel barrel will completely destroy that guy, so that is the solution to that very complicated puzzle. You don't want to hug the wall too much there, because you will get stuck and lose all momentum. Now, which way do we want to go? We have a checkpoint this way. Over here, we have something going on. I'm not entirely sure what, but let's see. We have TNT barrels coming at us. What do I even want to do here? Do we have a bonus game around? No, so is, that, is this the right way or the wrong way? I'm kind of confused. I was also afraid that that blind jump was going to result in death. Hmm, where on earth do I want to go? So if I go left here, okay, so maybe I would want to do that. Alright, so if you do not have Squitter, yeah, obviously you're going to need to change the barrel type, uh, because you would not be able to completely cheat your way across this gap. So, that solves the mystery of what the heck is to the left. I hate split paths. <laughs> they make everything so difficult. I like hidden secrets, but I hate split paths, because you always get that feeling that you're missing something, but... You know, I like it when there's just secrets where you kind of have to verge off and it's obvious that it's a secret, but not when you're not really sure if it's a secret or not. I don't know. I have no idea what I'm even talking about. And uh, this is a completely timed thing. But yeah, we had Squitter, the spider guy, again in this level. I don't know what it is with the factory levels and having him in it. I, like, do factories usually have spiders hanging around? I mean, I guess old Gunji factories. It would be natural to have some bugs. What do people think of bugs anyway? Usually, when, like, if I find bugs outside... 
they don't usually bother me, but if I find a bug inside my house, I'll usually try to do something about it, because, you know, I don't want to just be playing video games and then all of a sudden, bugs come out of absolute nowhere. Am I supposed to go to the left? Yeah, I am, but I didn't do it right. <laughs> I did something wrong here. Oh, and the, I, I kind of pressed B way too early. Do I have to die in every single video now? I swear, I'm not that bad at this. <laughs> Oh, so even when you come out of the checkpoint, that's an interesting note that I kind of completely forgot about. Uh, if you hit a checkpoint and you are transformed into a kind of an animal buddy, you will still be transformed into them when you start the level again, which I guess makes sense, because there will be some levels where you will, of course, be required to play as an animal buddy, so it would kind of break things if you, uh, you know, went to the checkpoint and you were not still transformed. Anyway, let's quickly get back to where we were. I was trying to get to that bonus game there, and I'm kind of, you know thinking about how exactly that works, because the way that the guy is shooting the barrels, I think that it's probably pretty easy to just fly across with Dixie, but I was being stupid. Uh, so let's see what we can do with that. Actually, we still have a little ways to go before we get back there, I guess. So let's just fall down here. A DK barrel we don't need. I completely should have gone and... Man, Andrew. <laughs> I cannot time that, like, uh, barrel blast for whatever reason. It's okay, we want to be Dixie, because I think the easiest way to get over there is probably just to use her floating ability. Alright, there. Was that so difficult? Okay. So we got this, if we do this, we can probably, yeah, so there's probably some tricky bouncing thing you're supposed to do with the barrels. I mean, since they're being shot out so fast, you can probably get a good bounce over there, but the easiest way to do that is definitely just fly over with Dixie. Anyway, we have to find the token. Um, I guess the difficulty here, okay, so we just kind of have to bounce across, I guess, like that. And <laughs> overall, not too difficult. They give you more than enough time to figure that one out. I mean, you just kind of sit back for a second, look at how the heck the bonus game actually works, uh, and then you're good. So, okay, very nice. Let's bounce across here. And we have a coin. What the? 46 coins. Not too bad. Alright, let's see. Should almost be at the end now. Did we get the G yet? I kind of completely forget what letters we're up to. I know we at least have the N. I don't know if we have the G. Oh, there's a, there's an invisible blue balloon, uh, in case you did not know that that was there. There we go. K-O-N-G up to nine lives. I mean, I, I usually turn off the game, because I know I take a break in between parts sometimes, so <laughs> lives have not been being calculated very well, but overall, there you have a blue flag, and uh, that should be all of the bonus games and the DK coin. Very nice. Blazing Bazooka's 100% complete. And that was the second factory level of the world, but now we have something different. Uh, this is a very cool level theme, and this is kind of the inside of the pipes, or the pipeline level theme, and we have Low G Labyrinth. And yeah, you will kind of see here, we're inside this pipe with this weird kind of green gas. And yeah, low gravity uh, labyrinth is not an over-exaggeration. You can jump very high, and you move a little bit slower than you normally would. And I accidentally jumped not knowing that that guy was there. And uh, we are taking even more damage. I'm sure that a stupid death is imminent, don't you worry. Anyway, we're just kind of working our way up here. But like I um, said you know, a few parts ago, Donkey Kong Country 3 definitely does a good job of make sure that, uh, making sure that every level you know, kind of has something new in it. It's not just the same level you know, three times. It, it, uh, they always do neat things like the, the low uh, gravity here, or even the fact that like, even though there was a second factory level, they uh, introduced the bazooka guys, which was kind of neat. Is there really nothing over here? I risk getting hit by those guys for some bananas? It's not even worth it, so... Let's just fall down here. We have another coin, which takes us up to 47. wonder how many we'll have by the end of this world. Hmm. It's kind of doing some crazy jumps here. It can take a little while to get used to the low gravity, but it's not too bad. Whoa, okay. Thanks for not even letting me know that I needed to go to the right there. That was a kind of poor blind jump. Because it didn't really give you any indication of what you needed to do, but luckily we lived through it. I mean, we missed the O, but I'm not going to cry over that. We have a bonus game there, and I think I know how to get it, but we're going to have to pass these guys first. And we're going to go up here, and yes, so right here, we have this guy, and his name isn't Squawks. Darn it, the purple one has a different name that is slipping my mind at the moment. Basically, the purple one is different from the green one, because the purple one cannot shoot. You can press the Y button all day, and you will not be able to defeat any enemies. So pretty much, he is just good for flying around. Uh, he does have another trait that Squawks does not have, though, and that the purple one can pick up barrels off of the ground and use them to defeat enemies. And uh, he will play a big part in that sense. But darn it, what is his name? <laughs> it's, 
it, it's kind of like a bootleg version of Squawks, but I can't remember exactly what it is. But anyway, we have to collect 80 stars. Uh, this bonus game is not too difficult. Kind of just clear it one row at a time, right? You, uh, where you go left, and then you go back to the right, and you should have enough time to do this in, you know, the time that it gives you. Let's see here. I hope I don't have to go back to the right. I probably do, don't I? Oh, okay, we can do it in four seconds. Yeah, we have plenty of time. There you go, up to 40 bonus coins. Very nice. And darn. Yeah, this guy's name will be on the screen. I am sorry that I have forgotten it. That's pretty silly of me. But can I fly between these guys? <laughs> I mean, you have other. You have some times where the hitbox is really ridiculous. You have other times where I'm completely touching both of them at the exact same time. That's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, anyway, here is kind of some of that barrel picking up action that I was talking about. Uh, squawks could not do this. Bootleg purple squawks can do this. And yeah, it's something, I mean, you can kill all those green guys if you really do not feel confident. Otherwise, uh, only defeat the ones that you really feel necessary to defeat. I mean, you can pretty much, like, destroy everyone here. But I believe that that barrel respawns, so I mean, you can just keep going back and getting it again and again. And levels in this game do not have time limits, so I mean, you can just kind of uh, spam that all day. But we are not going to do that too much here because it is not necessary. Let's see, where the heck do I want to go? We go down. Actually, I was probably supposed to defeat you with the barrel, wasn't I? <laughs> Either way, we have found the bonus game. Yeah, there's definitely going to be a barrel around that I should have killed that guy with. But why not take the hit? Because we can. And hey, we're turning into green squawks now. So we, we, uh, we can kind of break everything. And can you please face the right way? So yeah, pretty much now we have our shooting ability back. Although I believe that green squawks cannot pick up barrels. So you kind of make the trade-off. But I would much rather have the shooting ability. <laughs> because... You don't have to worry. It's pretty much uh, better than bar uh, being able to pick up barrels because you can just destroy anything anytime. You don't have to worry about you know, finding the nearest barrel respawn point. But let's kind of destroy you. And uh, there is the bonus coin for 41. Very good. And that will dump us. Oh, it darn. It even changes us back to the purple guy. That's cheap. I never asked to be transformed back. Also, we have a steel barrel coming up. Do I get a hint that the DK coin is nearby? Maybe. Also, I have no idea where exactly it dumped us off, considering, you know, um, <laughs> we kind of skipped some of the level bias of that bonus game, which is kind of silly. And please tell me that that barrel comes back. It doesn't. That is very disappointing. I really hope that we do not need to use that for the DK coin. Because I stupidly used it for that. Okay, there's no way that it's uh, required for the DK coin. Because there's no way that we could have taken it through that barrel there. What do I want to do here? Um, if we go up, is that a sign that says no bootleg squawks guy? Yes, it is. So, okay. I hope that this barrel respawns. Not going to risk flying through these guys at the speed that they are going. Although, I'm not really sure which way it wants us to go. Because we have a three-way split here. I mean, we're definitely not going the way that gets rid of this guy. Okay, we have located the DK coin. Okay, wow. So, we have multiple paths that actually destroy him. So we're definitely going top left at this point, but what is to the right? Anything good over here? Maybe this is where you come from. Oh, that's probably it. This is probably where you come from if you do not enter that bonus game. So by going into the bonus game, we actually ended up in a completely different area, uh, which is not something that commonly happens when you enter a bonus game, so that's pretty funny, actually. But anyway, it looks like we want to lose this guy here. Okay, and there's even a respawning barrel up there in case we mess up really bad, but let's just see this. Do not mess this up. Very nice. 20 DK coins. Um, but yeah, let's see. So if I go up here, yeah, so we could have uh, easily just taken this back down, I suppose. This one probably uh, respawns too. Yeah, it does. So if I go to the left here, what do we find? I think that the end is to the right. Yeah, throwing barrels is very difficult in low gravity, I have to say. Yeah, this level is just kind of one big maze. I don't remember it being so, you know, complex, but I, I like it. Definitely like it. Uh, oh, we have coins! Yes! Very nice! We are over 50 coins, and uh, everyone who has been watching since part one should know what that means, but yeah, we will worry about that later. That's very cool. I actually completely forgot that that secret existed. Three coins and an invincibility barrel, and we're not even at the end yet. Oh, we missed the O, and everyone, I'm sure, remembers exactly where that happened. Anyway, wow, we have a few more jumps here. This level just goes on. Not that I'm complaining, I like difficulty and uh, long levels, but this is this is not what I was expecting from this level. I kind of completely forgot that it was that uh, long and complex. But there you go, a blue flag after all of that. 
which I believe is four out of five blue flags, meaning that the flag on the overworld will be blue, which is very nice. And there you go, with all five levels of World 4 down, we have the boss, which is Chaos Carnage. So let's do this. And unlike other bosses, we actually have a bit of a cutscene here. You must be destroyed! So yeah, that's, that's kind of bizarre for a boss in this game to you know, actually have dialogue. I mean, what, what other game? I, mean, like, I don't believe that there's ever been another Donkey Kong Country game with a boss that actually had dialogue before. Not even the final boss in like Donkey Kong Country 1 or 2 or anything like that. So that kind of indicates that you know maybe this boss is a little bit more important than the other ones. Which actually kind of reminds me, I haven't talked too much about the story in this game, have I? <laughs> I'll have to get to that after I defeat this guy. Um, because, I mean, you usually think, you know, story in a 2D platformer, who really cares? People play it... Oh, and Andrew, you suck. <laughs> um, you know, people don't usually worry too much about the story. I mean, especially like when I was a kid, I had no idea what the story in any of these games were. Um, so let's see, just kind of jump on you. That's three hits now. And uh, it's kind of hiding in the corner there. <laughs> it's kind of run into the wall. But yeah, I mean, Donkey Kong Country games actually have a story, surprisingly. I mean, you might be asking yourself, why the heck is this a Donkey Kong Country game and you don't even play as Donkey Kong? Uh, that is an easily answerable question. I mean, when you think about it, until Returns came around, you really only played as DK in one out of the three Donkey Kong Country games, which is kind of funny uh, when you think about it. Uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 had Dixie and Diddy, and now uh, Donkey, Country, Donkey Kong Country 3 has Dixie and Kitty Kong. Also, I just kind of hit that guy. Um, so yeah, pretty much the kind of protective head cover shield helmet thing came off, and it is now shooting lasers at us, and that was very close to getting hit there. I'm going to jump up on this guy here, jump on you, and is that enough hits? No, it is not. We still need to dodge this guy. I've always liked the way that the lasers look, though. I mean, it doesn't look like they would be nice to touch, but they, they look cool anyway. Alright, this might be the last. I think it's th it was three for the helmet and then three for the head thing. Let's see about that. Kong's win? How could this be even possible? So next time we meet, Chaos will win. So, oh man, foreshadowing that we may see this boss again at some point in the future. And look what it dropped. That is another ski. So you add that to one ski and you get two skis. Math is an incredible thing. But yeah, I never really talked much about the story in this, in, uh, in this game. And the way it works is that uh, Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong went on a bit of a trip one day. Uh, to the Northern uh, Kremisphere, which is actually what this is, you know, get it, Northern Hemisphere, Northern Kremisphere, get it, ha ha. Um, so they went on a trip to this place here, and after a few days they didn't return, so Dixie's like, oh man, I am worried about them. Uh, so then that's pretty much where the game starts off. She comes here, um, then you meet Kitty, and then you go searching for them, and yeah, we haven't exactly seen any sign of them yet, so maybe she was right in being suspicious that something went wrong, but... We will have to worry about that in the future, I suppose, because we are about halfway through the game. And now that we have both of those skis, we want to go back and visit uh, Funky's Rentals. And also, something I never pointed out is that if you press X on the controller, <laughs> it makes kind of a honking sound in uh, whatever boat you're in, which is really useless. I don't think it's ever, uh, it's ever actually used for anything, but it's kind of funny to point out, I guess. Whoa, we have two skis! You know, skis are the rarest thing around here. So uh, he takes those, and he will make us a brand new boat, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, the Turbo Ski. This is the fastest of all of the boats. And yes, yeah, so you can press Y, and it'll help you go even faster. And this will allow us to go up waterfalls, which is really cool. So we can uh, still go over rocks, just like we could before, although if we hold Y... You can get a massive boost of speed and head up here, where we will find a banana bird cave. And this is Undercover Cove. Let's see how good I am. I haven't screwed up on one of these yet, but I'm sure that I will now. <laughs> Still flawless at that, although I'm definitely anticipating a screw up in the near future, but very nice. I think that takes us up to seven banana birds. 
Uh, we did not get a banana bird in the last world because uh, we are not uh, we are actually unable to at this point. But we will worry about that in the future. And I actually almost completely forgot that now that we have over 50 coins, we can go back to Bazaar's general store, which we have not seen since part two, and purchase the elusive mirror, which I always used to call a magnifying glass as a kid by accident. Because it does kind of look like one on the shelter, even though it actually says, um, you know, mirror right there. So let's buy that, and that will take us down to a single silver coin although that is actually the most expensive item um that you need to buy with silver coins in the game um so it, it's pretty much it, it's good that we got it out of the way now for buying it are there secret caves i have not seen um there's quite a lot actually but if you want me to tell you it'll cost 13 coins so i guess that they'll tell me um about the where, maybe where the banana bird caves are located i actually don't remember what happens when you buy this kind of piece of text but we don't have 13 coins anyway so it's not like we can really do anything there uh, but yeah, that is how that works. We might as well save. Why not? We're here at Wrinkly's Save Cave anyway. And yes, yeah, bleh. sorry Dixie, I've just had new teeth fitted. That's pretty great. And we can look at our up-to-date stats after an hour and 43 minutes, exactly halfway through the game, technically. I mean, in the title of every video, it says 103%. So it's not really a, a spoiler that we're going to be going over exactly 100, but we're pretty much halfway. 20 DK coins, 1 silver coin, 41 bonus coins, 7 banana birds, and now we have the mirror to add to our item list. Still 4 mystery items and a weird thing off to the right, which I have not spoken of yet. Remember to look left, right, and then up for falling monkeys. When crossing the jungle though, surprisingly, this game doesn't really have jungles. It has forests and other stuff. Doesn't, uh, it's not like, you know, the first Donkey Kong Country game where it was pretty much all in the jungle. Well, kind of, anyway. But yes, now that we have the super fast boat, we can go up these waterfalls right here. And that takes us up to the next section of the overworld. And to World 5, which is K3. And I think that wins the award for shortest name for a world ever. Maybe. Is there any other game that has ever had a world that only had two letters in its name? I'm sure that there's not a world that only had one. Well, I mean, I guess unless you called it world one and then wouldn't it technically be six characters long or seven if you include the space i don't know before i get too far into this i think that we should end this off so uh hope that you enjoyed seeing the end of world four or three or whatever i'm not gonna even get into that again and uh, yeah i hope you enjoyed and i hope to see you next time for the start of world five <laughs> yes for no discrepancy regarding what world number it is it's finally nice to have that freedom so hope that you enjoyed that and hope to see you next time for more so thank you and see you later